So welcome to the Comics Lounge. Um, we're the loungers. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to introduce ourselves. So first off, I'm Chris. I'm Vernon. I'm Jonathan. I'm Caleb. I'm Gary. Oh, I'm Gary. So that's everyone. And this is just going to be like the first time that we're all meeting each other. And we want to get to know each other as well as you guys get to know us. So I'm going to go through my comic book history. And it's not long. Um, my dad's comic book history is a lot longer than mine. He got into comics up until his brother decided to sell a bunch of them when he went off to college. So he took most of his comic books and just sold them off. And then my dad came back from college and was like, okay, where's all my comic books? So I would, I would have a lot bigger collection than I do, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but growing up in the nineties, I actually loved the comic book TV shows. Uh, Static Shock was one of the biggest ones and my favorite, uh, the nineties animated Spider-Man. Uh, that was huge for me. The comic book that actually got me back into comic books was I started watching the movies with my wife when we were dating, and then we went to New York City, uh, Forbidden Planet, and I bought this trade, and I loved it. And I have almost boxes full of comics now. Great cover on that, too. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's nice. I read that on the train from New York City to um, Rhode Island, and it was amazing. <laughs> Who'd like to go next? I'll volunteer. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay, yup. So I was in, not really in the comic books, but like the cartoons, like way back in the days, like Spider-Man and his amazing friends, Super Friends and Incredible Hulk. So like Superman and Spider-Man was like my favorite when I was like coming up. But my older brother, God bless his soul, he got me into comic books, him and his homeboy. They used to draw all the time. So, like, when I saw Wolverine on, on um, Spider-Man and some Amazing Friends, <laughs> I was like, oh. dude, yeah. But Batman with Tim Burton took that to a whole nother level. So, it, it just, like, it, that didn't stop. But, like, I started collecting comic books, like, Probably my first one when I was like five years old was Cloak and Dagger with um Dr. Doom on the cover. I gotta yeah. find that book too. <laughs> and I got um West Coast Avengers. So Hawkeye is like my favorite Avenger though. It's when he was battling Sagittarius. Yeah. That one right there. It's it's somewhere around here, but I wanna look for it though. But <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Yep. But I I really started getting back in the comic books was on um, Batman. That was like 15 years ago with um Hush, Gotham Knights, the this comic book, but then it, um, the series kind of discontinued. I was so shocked and sad about that. I was like, Darn, that was a good book, though. But Batman and Detective Comics, that was pretty big, though. Good series. Who'd like to go next? Uh, I'll go. Okay. So so for me, my superhero journey started with a trilogy. I say what you will about these movies. I love them, but the Tobey Maguire films. I was a young kid. <laughs> I watched both two, Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. I love everything about it, and I will ne I, I will die on the hill that I love Tobey Maguire, and I think he was awesome. Um, the, first, <laughs> the first comic book that I actually read, or graphic novel, probably shouldn't have read it the age I did, but I was seven, and I really didn't understand it, but was <laughs> The Killing Joke. Probably wasn't the best story to start up uh, a young reader. But, That's uh, a perfect I one to start off with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe it was the perfect one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they can only get happier from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is where I started off. Uh, my uncle had the, the uh, Batman the Animated Series. I used to watch all the time, so that really got me into Batman. Um, obviously, Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond is my favorite. Batman, Terry McGinnis, I love, I love the old Bruce, you know, Bruce Wayne, I love that, um, it's, my favorite superheroes have always been Spider-Man, and Superman, and Batman, all those guys, so that's what started me off in comics. That's awesome. I'll go next, um, yeah, kind of, kind of similar to a bunch of you guys, like, 
you know, I definitely, I definitely had that older influence that kind of started me off. Um, it was my dad. He was really big into, I, I mean, he, he, he was a, an artist himself. He was a designer. And so he was big into all sorts of art. And one of the things that he started my art career out with was, hey, here's a how to draw comic books. And he was a huge Stanley Jack Kirby fan. Um, we're, we're Marvel purists in, in my family. Um, and uh, yeah, so just, you know, he had, he had long boxes and long boxes full of stuff. And, um, you know, it, it kind of started me off with, you know, learning how to draw and like learning the history. It's really weird. Um, I, I grew up in Maine um, for my formative years until I moved to New York for college. So we didn't really have a lot of um, like money um, for like, you know, buying comics and stuff like that. So a lot of my comic knowledge and reading and collecting was all you know in started in college and um same thing with like the old like the old x-men series the old uh spider-man series stuff like that i didn't watch those until i was actually older but i have a really weird like obsession with comics that started way back when i was a kid without even really like getting a lot of books until i was older um so yeah um favorite characters uh wolverine got him tattooed on me that's how favorite he is <laughs> uh, he's number one um, all day huh the wolverine all day <laughs> oh yeah man wolverine he's i mean you really can't beat him man and uh second second would be venom i'm a hardcore symbiote fan so um with my collections those are very strictly what I follow. It's really easy to get off course, <laughs> um, you know, and start getting long boxes and long boxes full of stuff. But yeah, that's those are the ones I I mainly collect. I do a couple of like random ones, like I we were talking in one of the posts. Um, um, I do a lot of like uh, like old Frank Miller stuff, like the Sin City stuff. Talk, talk about. Not a good one to read when you were <laughs> younger. <laughs> uh, City's really good. Um, his old 300 stuff. There's some newer, like you know, smaller sci-fi independents that are that are decent. But yeah, it's mainly mainly Venom slash Symbiotes, and then Wolverine slash Logan. So yeah. Awesome. Last one. Uh, all right. <laughs> Guess it's my turn. All right, so I started out pretty similar. Um, I'm almost 50 now, so I probably got a couple years on most of you guys. When I was a kid, they had Saturday morning cartoons. Mm -hmm. So I used to watch Spider-Man and his amazing friends. I used to watch Thunder the Barbarian, Ooh, the Iron yeah, Man that had the um, Julia Carpenter Spider-Woman on it, the old Incredible Hulk cartoon, just all those old classics. And then Love the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. It was great when I got to watch that all over again with my kid. It was just uh, fantastic. Everyone was lo loving the X-Men one. I was loving the Spider-Man oh, one. That was uh, the best one to Not me. that the X-Men was bad. The one that I watched all the time. It bad, man. It animated, animated series, too. Everybody forgot about that, though. I, I enjoyed watching Because that of one. Wolverine is why I got into the X-Men series. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. It was, oh, it was fun, man. It was just a lot of great episodes. Um, but uh, what got me into it as a kid, too, All my life, was, man. Was, uh, all my huge. life, bro. Had the toys and everything. <laughs> <laughs> X-Men Toy Biz. Um, I had every Batman Toy Biz, the Batmobile. Oh, oh man. there was no shortage of toys back That's then. Right. They were all over the place. <laughs> they were just cheap yeah. and broke when you had them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, um, Spider-Man and uh, we're mostly I'm mostly always been Marvel. Never really connected too much with DC characters. They're not bad. But the DC characters I like tend to be weird, like Etrigan the Demon. The big <laughs> one I like is Wonder Woman. I like Satana, but none of the big guys, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was Marvel, so it was, it was uh, this guy right here, Conan the Barbarian. Conan. Uh, oh, yeah. Conan. <laughs> him, him and Spider-Man. And 
Roy Thomas is always going to be my favorite Marvel writer. I know Stan's the man, but Roy Thomas. <laughs> and then he introduced me to that Sword and Sorcery world, which introduced me oh. to Robert E. Howard fiction. I read mm-hmm. all the Conan stories, plus the Solomon Canes and the King Calls every single year. Um, plus the, the comics are infinitely, I can go back to them and read them. I just absolutely love them. I have all the Red Sonias for Marvel and, uh, you know, I almost have this whole 275 set complete, almost there. Wow. But, um, yeah. Spider-Man, I've, I collected here and there through the years. About my only DC love back in the day is when I was a kid. I used to love the old Brave and the Bold with the uh, Batman and whoever he was teamed up with that month. But it was the Batman with the blue and gray suit. That was my favorite Batman suit. Hmm. So that was the one I connected with the most when I was a kid. So I just, I ended up getting like boxes of Brave and the Bold from someone. And as all us comic collectors can lament, we've all had great things in our collections that either our parents got rid of when we moved. And <laughs> it's always, like, oh, if I only still had this, if I only still had that, but you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but that's what got me in. That's what keeps me in. Just the love of storytelling, the incredible artists. Um, even though I'm not a DC person, I have no hate for DC. I think both companies are great. They both open imagination. They both have incredible stories. It just depends <laughs> on your taste. Uh, that's it for me. <laughs> I love the facial reactions from Caleb. <laughs> hey, man. I, I mean, it's really, it's, it's a very, uh, I mean, it, it, it's no secret my my disdain for DC, mainly as mainly just as a company, um, especially like this last stunt they pulled with Diamond, you know, you know, pulling out and and just you're you're disrespecting the industry, <laughs> your fan base, like all that. They got some good stuff. I like I like the really dark stuff, the Batman that laugh stuff that they put out. That stuff looks metal, and I was like, okay, like. I was I was so close to like giving it a try, so I just kept seeing those two letters on the front. And I, <laughs> I guess I'm the DC guy here. I might be the I might be the no. I think you and Vernon. I think Vernon likes yeah, a good Vernon guy. Vernon guy. These are all my Marvel versus DC over here. Let's not go on. I want to interrupt they nobody. Do some cool stuff. Yeah, you know, DC got some good stuff. Yeah, they do they cool they stuff. You know, build, like uh, Marvel versus DC back in the day. Oh yeah, so Spider-Man and Superman fighting the parasite, and those are great. <laughs> <laughs> Wolverine going up, going toe to toe with Lobo. <laughs> the the animation universe. What killed DC for me was their live-action movies. Once they left uh, the universe for Batman, everything that they've come out with has just been so wishy-washy. Trying to keep up. Pause. With- See, and that's the thing. Two jokers, <laughs> though. Yep. Those two jokers, you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Like, um, Joaquin, I, um, Phoenix, and um, Jared Leto. Le- Le- uh, yeah, no, Jared Leto. No, he's Ledger, my guy. He's Ledger. Oh, he's Ledger. Ledger. He's Ledger. Ledger was good, though. Jared Leto was Jack in the movie Ledger. for like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cut all this stuff. <laughs> And see, here's the thing, like, with the Joker, it's an interesting character because he's been reimagined yeah, so many times. times, and he really hasn't had a bad actor. Jerry Lone is probably, like, the worst one he's had, but yeah. if you're going to throw in Mark Hamill, you're going to throw in, you know, uh, you know, uh, the, the voice acting, you're going to throw in Jack Nicholson, if you got, you know, he's one of those characters that... He's had some crazy actors bring their own thing to him, and he really hasn't ever been done, like, just horribly, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, they've all kind of had their own thing. So I feel like the Joker, if anything, is the saving grace for the for the DCEU. Yeah. But yeah, oh, everything sure. else I agree <laughs> is trash. <laughs> and see, I just see the character that's played out. The Joker is not even... this whole universe with all these... Universe. Like Jared Leto's Joker is part of it, and they're not going to have him back. And yeah, uh, yeah. Joaquin, I can't ever pronounce his name properly. Joaquin. Um, Joaquin. Yeah, oh, me well, Joaquin. 
Um, yeah. His is totally outside of the actual extended universe. So I was like, well, right, why, right. why are you making movies that aren't part of your universe you're trying to build? So, but it's like, like the best movie that they put out in like yeah. 10 years. <laughs> For me, it's like, I think DC needs to not, not try and not do the MCU. They need to just keep doing what they're doing. I think after Joker, after Shazam for me, um, Birds of Prey was okay. Um, I'm a big Man of Steel. I love the Man of Steel, but I think DC needs to just move away from the universe and just start doing its own Elseworld stories yeah. because it worked. It's, look at how the Joker came out. It worked for yep. the Joker. So, you know, I'm just hoping they just stop, stop with the universe stuff. It's not going to work for you guys. You guys obviously aren't doing it right. So just keep and, doing yeah. it, you know. Batman but like the one movie, I, a phenomenal I movie. Truly hate was Superman Returns. Mm. <laughs> yeah, just, Brandon I Ralph was good in that. That, that movie was not his fault. Sure it wasn't. I agree with you. Make a Superman <laughs> movie where Superman doesn't throw a punch. That had nothing to do with Brandon Ralph. No, nope, I agree with you. You're right. I agree. Correct. You know, it had that one kick-ass scene where the bullet bounces off his eye. And that's the most action Superman got, besides being a super <laughs> creeper and peeking on his girlfriend with his exposition. <laughs> See, that's the thing, like, right? the Superman movies have such a bad reputation. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen, like, the last 10 or 15 years worth of, of them. I remember watching some of the old ones. I remember the old, like, black and white, like, Superman, Clark Kent, like, TV shows that my my dad made me watch. Yeah, George Reeves. Why, but, yeah. <laughs> You know, the like the, the underwear on the outside of the tight Superman kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I remember watching that. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like all like the, the modern stuff, it actually, I remember when like Smallville was like a huge thing and people were like, whoa, it's young Superman and people were going like nuts over it. And then that show just tanked completely and <laughs> people were in like in the streets rioting. And no, it went for 10 years. I wasn't a fan, but that show had legs. Oh, yeah. That it, show was all me. Dude. I watched the show every time it was on. <laughs> My biggest thing with DC <laughs> is I just Superman with was the, a, a good movie. I'm not going to say phenomenal. It was a good movie, The Man of Steel. Um, and then they came out with Batman vs. Superman, and that would have been a phenomenal <laughs> movie if Lex Luthor and Superman weren't in it. Why is a Batman movie having Lex Luthor as the main villain? I don't understand that. Oh, yeah. But well, I just don't understand why Lex Luthor was always just a real estate guy. Yeah. He was never he was never imposing like he was in the comics. Yep. Yeah. He was a genius and would build stuff yeah. that would beat Superman's ass into the ground. Man, and Lex Corp was like, well, crying out I real estate. Like, but he made him a real estate guy in the movie. <laughs> right? I mean, it's like, you know, it's like when the biggest threat is real estate. <laughs> I mean, they, they they did that to Kingpin too, in, in some of the in some of like the the uh, '80s and '90s co in uh, comic runs, they did that to Kingpin. They they made him into like a mogul instead of like a threat. <laughs> like he was just kind of like this really rich like mob guy, and like he was Uncle Vinny instead of like you know. Oh, an actual, but if we're gonna like force to be reckoned with. If we're going to bring like... up Kingpin, we to give a shout out to Michael Clark Duncan, who people didn't like the Daredevil movie, but he was a great Kingpin. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. He had yep. a great voice for it. He had the stature for Kingpin. Yep. He, was, he was amazing. Wasn't he in the, the Punisher show as well? The the character, yeah. It was played oh, yeah. by um, different oh, actor. I can't name now to put me on the spot. Vincent I can't even think of it. Yeah, private pile. He's a good yeah, he's a good yeah, it was the, it was the, uh, the uh, and, I mean, he was great too. Yep. Two great interpretations of one character. Yeah, I dude, just wish with, um, the Spider Verse The sp the the uh, Spider Verse Kingpin. Holy crap! Like oh, that yeah. larger than life kind of thing. Like very hulky. Oh yeah, that was dope. Like <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, this the whole like, and Lex Luthor is one of those characters who's really weird. Where it's like, depending on where you're, like when in the series you pick up the comic book, he could literally just be like some rich dude, or he could be like a super villain. Yeah, and that like the consistency difference between you know DC and Marvel, not to keep pitting those against each other, but I feel like the consistency difference between 
like in Marvel, you have different lines and different runs, different writers and artists. They do different things with the characters. Granted, yes, but I feel like in DC, like even if you have the same team working on a long run, they can't decide what they want to do with the characters. So there's so many like roller coaster inconsistencies with like the plot lines, and when it comes down to like powers, and it comes down to you know like. Even just like the base of their character, it's I, I just I don't feel it's as like cement as Marvel kind of has a reputation for having like those characters that you can stay with for you know ten years or whatever, and they're not going to change. They're going to progress, but you're not going to pick up the next issue and be like, "Wait, who is this?" You know. <laughs> Marvel does have one one villain they have to fix. It's uh it's their Lex Luthor, and that's Doctor Doom. I'm sorry. So DC has their messed up Lex. We have our messed up Doctor Doom. Yep. It's a character yeah. that's great to do. But. So, with all that being said, I think this was a great first video. It was nice to meet you all. Um, meet you all too. Okay. Here and, but. Now that we've officially all met the loungers of the comic lounge, um, it seems like a lot of us are Marvel, not DC. <laughs> so yeah, not yeah. DC, though. With, with a little, I mean, a little bit of DC thrown in, I will. Yeah, a little bit. I like the Flash comics right now. That's one of my. That's on my pull list right now. Um, Burden's gonna riot. He's throwing so. the as soon as his beating's over. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm riot, dog. <laughs> <laughs>